This is Chapter 2, Lesson 1. Create procedures, call procedures with white rabbit actions. Open the notes document for this lesson and answer the questions as you go through this video lecture. Learning target. I can create and call a procedure for white rabbit animation. Now also the technical word for create is called as declared. So I can also say I can declare and call a procedure for white rabbit animation. I can do a stepwise refinement. I can create a class procedure. I can call the procedure. I can add comments to the procedure. Now let's take a look at white rabbit animation. The white rabbit is hopping forward. And then the white rabbit is flapping its ears at the same time. And in order to solve this problem to make the white rabbit hop, and flap its ears, we are going to follow the four step process in problem solving. Step one is understand the problem. And as you know, when we talk about understanding the problem, it's always known what the scenario is. The white rabbit is happy and spins one complete revolution. The white rabbit jumps up and forward. Then he decides to flap both its ears. He may choose to flap one ear at a time or flap both ears at the same time. Now in order for us to understand the problem, we need to first identify the objects. And if you saw the scene, we have our object in here that's a white rabbit. And the props that we had in our scene was the wall and the bushes. The second thing we need to keep in mind is identify the actions. Now based on a scenario here, we know that white rabbit can jump up and forward, white rabbit can spin, white rabbit can flap its ears. Let's look at the problem and understand it. This is our first program in chapter 2 and it's called White Rabbit Actions. The initial scene is given to you. We have background as the grass template and White Rabbit as an object. It's a biped object because it has two legs. We have some bushes and the wall. So this initial scene is given to you. And the white rabbit will do some actions like hop and flap its ears. Now when we take a look at our code, white rabbit turn left, white rabbit delay, white rabbit hop, white rabbit flap ears. Now where is hop? Where is flap ears? Built-in procedures. The built-in procedures are ready-made procedures and they are very simple actions. We have used built-in procedures so far in our class. For examples, move, say, turn, roll. And if we take a look at the method tab in here, these are the procedures that's uh, ready-made given to us, or these are the built-in procedures that's given to us. Say, think, move, move towards, move away from, and much more. So the white rabbit does not have hop and flap ears procedures. So the hop and flap ears procedures is a complex action that combines several simple actions. Let's take a look at our step two, design. So when we talk about a solution, the, we need to first set up the initial scene, which is already given to you. The next thing we need to do is develop an algorithm. So this is what we have done traditionally so far in chapter one. So when we write an algorithm for the actions to happen, we are going to write down step by step instructions in here. We want the white rabbit to do some actions like hop forward, flap its ears, and we write our instructions for that. Problem in this design is if we continue writing programs this way, the program will become too long, it will become difficult to read, it will become difficult to think and analyze, it will become difficult to find and remove bugs. There is a solution to this design. When we have our code in here, the first step we can do is, we can do a stepwise refinement. So the solution to a design is to do a stepwise refinement. Now what is stepwise refinement? It's nothing but the process of breaking this problem into larger tasks and then breaking each task into simpler steps. So we're going to take all of this large task in here and then we're breaking into two parts. And we're calling one as hop and we're going to write our simpler steps in here for hop. And next, we're going to break it into flap ears, where the white rabbit is flapping its ears. And then we're going to further break it down into much simpler steps. Now, we're going to take a design and go to a step three to implement the design. In implementing the design, we know that we need to write code. 
So in order for us to write code, we're going to take our design that we created in our step two, and we are going to do a, a stepwise refinement on our code. That means we are going to create procedures and then call procedures. So when we create a procedure, we are going to create a hop procedure. The white rabbit will know how to hop. And since white rabbit is a biped, we are going to create a biped class procedure. That means all the bipeds can hop. And the second procedure we are going to create is as flap ears, though that means white rabbit will know how to flap ears. Now white rabbit does have ears, but a biped does not. So our second procedure, flap ears, we are going to create for white rabbit class instead of a biped. Once we create these two procedures, we would call them to test it in my first method to see if it works correctly or not. So while we are writing our procedures, we need to keep doing incremental development. That means write a few lines of code and test it while we are writing the procedure. As we are creating a procedure, we are going to test it. Now how do I create a procedure? We open the class tab from the class menu. The first step that you want to do is go to the class menu. And since our white rabbit is a biped, we will select the biped class. And when you put your mouse over the biped class, you will see a biped tab. You go ahead and click on it. It's always a good idea to make general actions for a biped or for quadruped so that all the objects which are biped can hop. Now, when we are in the biped class tab, you can add, edit, or delete procedures, functions, or properties in a class document. Now, in order for us to add a procedure, now we're going to click on Add Biped Procedure button in our Procedures section. Now we're going to give a procedure name. Type in a name for the new procedure. When we type in a name for the new procedure, always follow the naming rules and the naming conventions. When we write a procedure name, it should always begin with alphabetic character, not a digit. That means hop is correct, three hop is not correct. A name consists of letters, digits, or underscore, no spaces or other symbol. That means hop5 is a valid name, hop underscore 3 is a valid name, number hop is not a valid name, bunny hop has space, it's not a valid name, hash hop. Now when we write a name for a procedure, always make sure it starts with a lowercase. And if we have two words, as a procedure name always make sure that we use camel case and camel case means our first word first letter is going to be lowercase the second word first letter is going to be an uppercase and of course there should not be any space in between them now the first step that we want to do in here is as soon as we click on create a biped procedure a hop tile has been created in the procedures panel so that now your biped class has a hop tab which is automatically opened in your editor area this now when you see this is a proxy that stands for the name of any biped object this could refer to white rabbit this could refer to bunny this could refer to snowman implement hop now we have created a hop procedure we commented it in here taking this design into consideration we are going to write our code into our editor area to make the white rabbit hop this is how a complete hop procedure would look like now the most important step is test as soon as you created a procedure you want to test test call hop procedure in my first method Always remember from our previous chapter 1 that every time I click on the run button, my first method is executed. Now that we have created a procedure, we are going to call it. The first step in order for us to do is select my first method tab. The second step you want to do is select white rabbit in the instance menu. You can also click on white rabbit directly in here and you'll see the list of procedures and then you will see your hop procedure here you would drag the hop procedure into my first method editor area the last step you would click on run to see if your procedure works correctly or not
We learned how to create a hop biped procedure and we learned how to create flat pears white rabbit procedure. Now that we have known how to create and call a procedure, why do we want to write our own procedures? Most importantly is it reduces the code size. Now in our algorithm here we wrote step by step actions for the bunny to hop and flap ears. So now if you take a look at this algorithm and then look at the size of the code, you can see it's half of it. So most importantly, it reduces the code size. We can call the method instead of writing instructions again and again. So if I need to call hop procedure five times, I can just call hop five times extra of writing all this same and again. Now next, it saves time. We can call the method again and again without having to rewrite the code. It's easier to find and fix errors. That's the bugs. That means if my Travis ears are not flapping correctly, I know that I have to go to the flap ears procedure and fix any errors. If my white rabbit is not hopping correctly, that means I need to go to the hop procedure and find my error in the hop procedure. 